Hi, I'm Rachel from Sweet Thorn, and this is my second video about my embroidery project. So I've got a small update to give you on the first project I showed you, and then I've got another set of projects to introduce as well. For those of you who've seen the first video, this is the flying acorn design for Louise Gardner's flying acorn army. And I know it's not looking vastly different from the last time I showed you. This leaf has been stitched on with a sort of applique, it's almost neat, it's the, the edges are almost all turned over but not all of them. But that is one of my first attempts at hand stitched applique. So I'm nearly happy with how neat it is. <laughs> It's all a learning curve, it's all very useful. So that's how far that's got along. I'm still struggling to get this shape correct. When everything's stitched down, then I can start to think about decorating the leaves with more embellishments. But I want to get everything all stitched down and get the foundation set first. So that's how that's coming along for now. My next behind the scenes embroidery project doesn't have a deadline so I can expand it and carry on with it as long as I need to. I've got some quite ambitious ideas, I expect it will take me quite a long time but I really like uh, the ideas that I've, I've got so far. The idea behind this project is to use the embroidery books that I've got and to look at new techniques and to experiment, learn more about textile art, learn more about different materials and threads, and to experiment and do as many examples, samples, case studies as possible to build up what I know about embroidery, to build up my ideas about design as much about techniques. And I'll show you the books that I've already got to be working with, and I've also got some other titles in mind as my projects develop. The Embroidery Stitch Bible by Betty Barnden has been particularly invaluable to me because of the wide range of stitches. You can start with very simple stitches and it goes on to show you more complex ones so there's a whole library to learn from. So this is something I'll be taking a deeper dive into but also I'll be working with variations on the simplest stitches and thinking about colour as well as technique. I've got a selection of books from the Royal School of Needlework as a foundation for learning about different types of embroidery. So for example this white workbook. And you can see how different white work techniques can be built up together to create a single design. I think I will start with something more like the butterfly on the front than the swan, but it's nice to know where things can lead to. Similarly with the black workbook, a beautiful contrast between black threads and white backgrounds, simple geometric designs that they can be built up, they can be varied and they can create really beautiful effects. So again that's something to experiment with. Silk shading or needle painting is something that will take me a while, I think, to really get to grips with. It's a, such a beautiful technique, sort of like realism in painting. There you have base constructions and then ideas for how to build up pictures and obviously it's so graceful and subtle and also painstaking. So I will enjoy 
finding out more about that technique but I do think it will take me a while to really get the flow of the way that the threads blend together. This is something a little bit new. This is by Susan Briscoe. A friend of mine has been working on Sashiko designs and of course they are so beautiful and effective these geometric patterns again a similar fascination to the black work where you have beautiful geometric designs you can enjoy the contrast of simple designs and you can build them up and watch how they work together Another aspect about learning about embroidery is to do with how you create designs and how you learn to think outside the box. I have a couple of books to help me to think more broadly about textile art. So these are they cover ideas of mark making and palette, the different effects that you can create, even with simple stitches, how things can be layered and built upon, what you can mix media ideas, how you can how you can cut through fabrics how you can build up layers of thread. And then this book, Slow Stitch, is about taking time out, finding time, even just for mark making and for exploring embroidery in a very intentional way and this book talks about having a stitch journal where you practice make mark making and designs and I think the whole idea of these these books is to do with um, starting up and seeing where it takes you and starting perhaps slowly starting deliberately starting simply with what you know you can manage and then adding to that and building on it. And that's a lot of the thought behind my embroidery projects because it will take me quite a bit of time to work through all my ideas. I have quite a lot of designs and ideas in my head, but also I want to learn from the books and let them help me to develop my ideas and to think outside the box more and to know more about fibre art and what hand embroidery can do. So do feel free to pop in now and again and see how I'm getting on with my projects and I should be getting on with the Louise Gardner Flying Acorn more quickly through this month and through August and then it will be my own personal embroidery projects, how are they coming along behind the scenes. Please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you want to find out how I'm getting on and I will post updates as regularly as I can. And thanks very much for watching. Bye.